The stage is set for the maiden edition of the Channel's Na International Kids Cup competition for under 13 players in primary schools. At the draw ceremony concluded today in Lagos, 16 teams have been drawn in four groups with the top two teams advancing to the quarterfinals. Season after season, now the Channel's Kids Cup competition has grown bigger and better, and this year is no different. The competition has grown from a Lagos schools competition to an international one with representatives from West African countries, Ghana and Benin Republic. Just before the Lions resume action on the field of play, a press conference and draws ceremony heralds the competition. And you know what it is that when you have brain, skills, and talent, everybody will be talking about you as a successful citizen. And that is the idea, basic idea of this project. The chairman of the technical committee, Tade Aziz, gets the kids acquainted with how this year's competition will be played. For this championship, we're going to go into four groups, and the four, uh, there will be four, four teams in each of the groups. We'll play a round robin, and uh, when we finish with a round robin, um, champions of these groups will come out to play quarterfinals, and from quarterfinals, we'll go to semifinals, third place, and we'll play finals. Four schools were seeded in the draw. One Lagos school was seeded in Group A. Defending champions Kaduna in Group B. Ghana were seeded in Group C. And Benin Republic seeded in Group D. To ensure the players are well kitted for the tournament, the 2017 jerseys for the competition were handed to the schools. <laughs> the kids are ready for action, but just one winner will be heading home with a trophy come Children's Day, May the 27th. Day 20 of the Nigerian Professional Football League, AM by International beat Remo Stars 1 0. League leaders Plata United played 1 0 draw with Katsuna United. Defending champions Rangers edged Gombe United 2 1 in Inugu. Wiki Torres thumped Abia Warriors 3 0. ABS FC beat Elkanemi Warriors 2-1. MFM FC drew goalless with Aqua United. Carno Pillars pipped Niger Tornadoes 1-0. FC Final Bear thrashed Shooting Stars 3-0 in Ibadan, while Sunshine Stars also lost home 0-1 to Lobi Stars. In the Premier League, for the first time under Arsene Wenger, Arsenal will not feature in the UEFA Champions League after finishing outside of the top four. The Gunners beat Everton 3-1 at the Emirates, but wins for their rivals has condemned them to fifth on the log. Manchester City beat Watford 5-0 to secure third place ahead of Liverpool, who beat Middlesbrough 3-0 in the fourth. Elsewhere, champions Chelsea won a record 30th game of the season with a 5-1 win over relegated Sunderland. Harry Kane scored his 27th, 28th and 29th goal to win the Golden Boot as Tottenham beat Hull City 7-1. West Ham edged Burnley 2-1. Leicester and Bournemouth played a 1-0 draw at the King Power. Manchester United beat Crystal Palace 2-0 at Old Trafford. Stoke won away at Southampton, while Swansea beat West Brom by two goals to one. Well, this was earlier today. Alexander Zverev winning the biggest match of his life, dismissing world number two, Novak Djokovic, 6-4, 6-3 in the Rome Masters final. The 20-year-old outplayed Djokovic, controlling play from the back of the court with his fluid two-hand backhand and heavy forehand. Zverev becomes the youngest Masters 1,000 titlist since the 19-year-old Djokovic won the 2007 Miami Open.
Uh, 48 suspected members of the Islamic State have been referred to a military court in Egypt in connection with three bombings of Coptic churches. Public prosecutor Nabil Sadek said some of the suspects were leaders within the Islamic State and had formed cells in Cairo and the southern province of Kenna to carry out the church attacks. He said the militants were also responsible for killing eight police officers at a checkpoint in the country's western desert in January. 31 suspects are in custody, while the others are still at large. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump has today called on leaders of Muslim countries to lead the fight against radicalization. The president is in his second day of the, his trip to Saudi Arabia, the first leg of his first official foreign trip. Speaking to leaders of 55 Muslim-majority countries, he said a new chapter of relations had begun in which he would not lecture them or impose on them the American way of life. Later today, we will make history again with the opening of the new Global Center for Combating Extremist Ideology. President Donald Trump's speech came as no surprise to leaders attending the summit. In his first days in office, the U.S. president had generated controversy with his push to ban many Muslims from entering the United States. Today, he described the fight against extremism as a battle between good and evil rather than a clash of civilizations. With God's help, this summit will mark the beginning of the end for those who practice terror and spread its vile creed. At the same time, we pray this special gathering may someday be remembered as the beginning of peace in the Middle East and maybe even all over the world. World leaders gave their reaction to President Trump's speech at the Arab American summit, expressing their own standpoints on combating extremism. Of Islam. Terrorist groups do not inhabit the fridges of Islam. They are altogether outside of Islam. They are Khawarij, outlaws of Islam. Muslims all over the world should unite. Unite to enhance Ukwah Islamia, Islamic Brotherhood. The unity of Muslims is the key to success of combating terrorism. President Trump continues his eight-day trip to Israel, the Palestinian territories, Brussels, the Vatican, and Sicily. To the arts now, they say Tantua is considered to, by many, to be a leading contemporary African artist. His works reflect timeless movement, uh, timeliness movement and change facing Africa today. Let's take a look. This exhibition is one of a kind. Dice Tantua has used scraps from the parts of all sorts of cars, from the modern to the exotic, and has turned them to usable art. I love classic cars, and yet I can't maintain them. So what I did was to make them into furniture. It's a new furniture line which I'm trying to create. It's actually called Sikh Designs. These living legends, architect Demas Nwoko, artist Yusuf Grillo, and author J.P. Clark, are part of the distinguished personalities who grace this occasion. It's just to what extent a creative mind can go. There is no end. Who can ever think of hacking a car? And he has gone beyond just creating installations, but actually painting iconic images from Professor Wale Shoinka to Chino Achebe to Demas Nwoko done on chairs crafted by this living legend himself. And the 81-year-old is pleased. I think I'm part of the world, and I believe that uh, all creative people are partners with God the Creator. Uh, you, you know, and that uh, I take everything that happens in life quite seriously. And uh, I, I want to bring out the best for everybody to key in and uh, have a, um, a, a fulfilling life, enjoyable life. He's an icon. He's bigger than life. I'll call him a, a genius because he really is. And in our country, we really don't celebrate a lot of people. They wait till they die, which I don't believe 
as artists, we should do that. That's why I want to start with him. There are many more we are going to celebrate from time to time. So I'm starting with him and starting with his chairs. The Afro-pop artist doesn't forget his comfort zone as his painting still grace the walls so viewers can get the soft and hard side of Desaire's world. He's a very excitable young man and he's doing things exciting, you know, because it's pop art. And uh, I think uh, he's quite a successful man, you know, uh, after graduating as an artist. So he's doing well. This show opens a new page in Desaia's career, stepping into furniture and functional sculpture, including his father's vintage classic Mercedes Benz. <laughs> And the main news again. The governor of Delta State, Ifai Okowa, today criticized politicians calling for a coup d'etat, saying Nigerians should see them as enemies of the country. Governor Okowa asked Nigerians to mobilize and fight against such moves, adding that what President Buhari needs now is prayers. That is news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.